welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain. Yo, we got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to Masters of the Nerdiverse, where we always have such sites to show you. This New Year's resolution of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and of course, Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And back with me, as always, is the one guy at the party who had nothing to drink but was the craziest person there, Winter Trash Monk the Thizzard. Oh, I had something to drink. Damn. <laughs> What's your poison, Winter? Tell the Nerdiverse what your poison. Uh, beer. <laughs> Just beer? Just un- yeah. <laughs> without designation, Doug? Yeah, I started off with a peanut butter chocolate stout. Ooh, that's always good. It was not. <laughs> really? And then I start. And then I had a pear cider. That's always that was, good. That was good. Doug. Okay. 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 And sure. then a Coors Light. Uh, then a coffee stout. And then there was like a couple of other drinks in between, but that's about it. And some water. Water. You gotta have water, man. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be wearing a lampshade on your head. Can't have that. Yeah, we there was a big brush fire that we had too, a bonfire that we were sitting around, and I was we were just telling stories and stuff like that. Did you tell them the stories of the Sandusky shovel slayer? No, oh. <laughs> it was more of uh, yeah. I went to high school up here. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Pretty neat. Okay. Did you kill a spider? No. All right. Tell people who you are. Oh, my name's Trash Monk, the third Trash Monk. I I I. It's Trash Monk. I I I. I have a little bit of uh, energy today, but it's uh, the New York New Year's Day uh, blues. Yeah, man, the existential crisis. I got dude. the New Year's Day blues. <laughs> Makes you want to yodel, my man. Mm-hmm. Makes you want to yodel to the to the heathen gods. Is what you think? There's a god of New Year. No. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> he's just super hype on one day and then after the rest of the year he's just like mm. <laughs> it's like that meme of uh, Jason Voorhees is just sitting around the house <laughs> until Friday the 13th comes he gets real hype he's like oh I can kill <laughs> he's just sitting around watching TV he has it marked in his calendar <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> he can't sleep on like Thursday the 12th he's like super awake and can't because he's so excited <laughs> hey man Dude, it's the new year, man. It's yeah. a brand spanking new decade, new year. So much potential, so much dirty laundry to just throw out the window. Dirty laundry. Dirty laundry. Dude, how was just oh, in general, how was your 2019? Long mm. growing up. Watch what you do. Trying to be better at telling people I got stuff to do. Tell them. Yeah. You know, take back your own time, my man. Yeah. Did you meet Wendy Cooper? Who's Wendy Cooper? Yeah. Yeah. You asked me that question. (laughs) (laughs) You asked me that question makes me so sad. Uh, Oh, man. Yeah, 2019 was a (laughs) bummer. 2019 could have went better i could have got my solid gold giraffe but it didn't work out you know it's totally fine <laughs> totally fine next time 2020 that 2020 vision you know what i'm saying is what we working with this year this year a lot 2020 of vision 2020 vision uh other than the holiday how was your week it was good. Uh, I'm watching The Expanse again. Is it expansive to watch? I like it. Oh, it's well. It deals with a <laughs> lot of things going on. Oh, like uh, 
it's a world it's like it's a sci-fi series where um uh, human beings have perfected like solar like they've uh populated the solar system nice and there's like people that have gone to mars and uh they've all they all have like one shared interest in common which is to make mars as powerful as earth then there's the belters which is like people that just live out in space and they have like issues that they can't really go on earth because their body's not used to the gravity (laughs) yeah that that, i would think that would be a problem at first for like a whole generation of people right and like it introduced and it's like all the politics that go in it like everyone's about to battle. It's a very good show, actually. It has the, it has the guy that played Highlander in the first in the first two seasons. Oh, uh, who? Christopher Lambert? Doug? I think so. Yeah, he played yeah. Raiden. Nice. Raiden. The fate of billions are in your hands. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, good, good stuff, man. What else you do, man? That sounds like <laughs> that sounds tight. That's on the Sci Fi Channel, right? No, it, it. I think it. It. It might have been for a bit, but then Amazon picked it up, and then after oh. a successful Kickstarter, guess what? It. It's now been renewed for like two more seasons, and Damn. I. I don't see it ever slowing down. Bob's your uncle, man. I'm with it. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. The rebirth, Doug. I'm with it. What else you do, my good man? Uh, I. Uh, tried to sleep a bit more. You know, that's about it. I got nothing else going on, man. I hear what did my, you do? I hear my dirt. Um, speaking of sci-fi, I started up season two of Lost in Space, uh, the Netflix series based on the old 60s series, you know, Danger, Will Robinson, Danger, all that. Uh-huh. Uh, about midway through, uh, the first season was interesting. It wasn't, it was a little too serious for Lost in Space. You know, like the, my whole issue with the whole s- series as in general, it just takes itself a little too seriously. Like Lost in Space was this super campy Gilligan's Island level, you know, TV series. And this series is just, that doesn't have an ounce of comedy to it. It's just it's like Indiana Jones in space, you know, and the Robinsons are this kind of Mary Sue kind of family that fi- solves the problems, you know, and it just. I just wish it was a little bit more whimsical, you know, that it doesn't have to lean full comedy, but just, just a tad more, you know, less, you know, Ram Shoker's Dracula and more the mummy, you know, with like Brendan Fraser, you know what I'm saying? Like if it was more of that, I think I would, I would enjoy it more, but not that, just that being said, it's a very well-written sci-fi show about them being lost in the infinite space and having to uh, try to find their way home. Quantum Leap style, steel. Um, so yeah, I'm just been watching that. Um, New Year's was New Year's, you know. What uh, was half asleep watching Twilight Zone? Pretty much been the last <laughs> few days <laughs> of my existence. One episode really jacked me up, but um, I forgot it existed. Much to the episode's storyline. Uh, do you remember the one where the three pilots go and do like a test run? an ex- air experimental airplane each one of them starts to get written out of existence i'm going to be honest nothing about that would make would stick to my brain <laughs> right it's it's a crazy episode and it's like it's it's pretty much like that feeling where it's like man did i leave the stove on or did i leave the water running to like the nth degree it's pretty mm-hmm. much a 30 minute panic attack is that episode <laughs> it's kind of nutty like, why is the show from the 50s and 60s doing that to me? But overall, still excellent show. Um, other than that, if I... Oh, been... I got some... Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. I'm actually going to save it to... I, I should save it till you're done because it's like YouTube news. Oh, I got, okay, good. I, I just got one more thing. Um, okay. Yeah, I just finally bit the bullet and got uh, Borderlands 3. I've been playing a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And um, it's... To its detriment and to its praise, it's just more Borderlands, you know? it's, it's It scratches that itch of the infinite shooter. You have four radically different playing avatars that you choose, and uh, you go through the silly story. You bounce from planet to planet, collecting guns and learning 
new attacks and new skills and it's just borderlands would you like another gun <laughs> would you like this gun this gun has fire this gun goes pew pew instead of pow pow this gun goes pow pow and it goes hazoo yeah i would still play it yeah it's bomb it's it's, it's just it's just border it's nothing more nothing less cameos make me hype you know of older one thing i do like but like about that series is that it honors its past games because all those vault hunters you've been playing this whole time constantly yeah. weave in and out of the storyline you play with them and you they 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 co-op you and it's really cool i haven't played any of the uh, multiplayer yet because i just don't want to play with people uh i'd rather play a single player for now at least until i beat it maybe i'll jump into uh pubs um but i'm enjoying it a lot um am i do i regret not buying it when it was hot no because it's not that kind of game you know what i mean it's not it's not competitive i don't have to catch up to anybody i can just play it at my own pace and so far so good really enjoying it um play and for those curious i'm playing as the beast master he's this robot who gets all these different uh beasts of borderland history and they are kind of like his attack dogs and attack um there's this one little there's a monkey with a machine gun i'm not a fan of him but um yeah it's fun i'm gonna probably try to just play that straight until uh ps5 is announced and then i'll have to reassess my life but other than that yeah just pretty standard week uh just trying to mentally prepare for this next year and not go insane with the existential dread of the future um youtube news what did you want to bring up yeah so uh as many of you uh, if you remember i've been following a cow chop this channel that uh beginning of the year there was uh, not the beginning i think it was maybe during the summertime that uh one of its original creators james left the channel to do his own like streaming and do stuff at home and they already lost like two people before that i believe and then the news came that they were shutting down the channel completely by the end of the year and uh they did uh the the yesterday was the final video that they put up and it was a pay- homage to the first vi- like uh to an earlier cow chop video so um take a look at that if you're interested uh it's very it's like uh watching a star kind of die in front of yeah. you yeah but it, a lot of the people that were on there are already do like uh, two of the people went off to make their own channel off canny. So we'll see where everybody lands. Yeah. That's something that's fascinating. That really open, happens on YouTube. It's mm-hmm. the series finale of a channel episode. You know what right. I mean? Like I was bummed out for like three months after the super best friends had their super best friends final episode that they didn't warn anybody about, you didn't know what's coming. Just one day you look up on your feed and it's like, oh, what's this? You click on it and it's a 15 minute episode of them explaining why they're never make, they're not working together anymore. Right. And I was legit like sad. I was like, it was like, like losing a friend, dude. I was so bummed out and I get they split up to do their own separate things and are all doing their own independent projects, but it's never the same than that cohesive synergy. You know, it's, it's, it's the death of a channel is always rough, especially when it don't give you a heads up on it. It seems like um, um, couch. It seems like um, this channel at least kind of gave you guys a heads up on it. You know yeah, I mean? I mean they're they're a channel connected to Rooster Teeth and all that, and they, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't know what the uh, other people are going to do on the channel, but I know a couple of them are branching out and doing other stuff. So, oh, so it goes. Well, God speak to them, and hopefully they um, find find a new creative outlet. You know what I'm saying? Because it's got to mm-hmm. go somewhere. So hopefully they'll either build their own empires or uh, join others. You yeah. know, hopefully they'll find a spot. Uh, cool, man. You want to do some polls of the week? Let's get to the polls. Polls. Let's get to the polls. Voting booth. We got votes. What if in the in the voting booth, uh, you're doing your your voting stuff and it just plays the sinking sound from Sonic the Hedgehog? You know, there's like a timer, <laughs> and it's like, dun 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 dun. You're like, oh snap! What am I gonna vote for? <laughs> oh no! I marked if, the wrong one. The problem with that is that if you don't know already who you're gonna vote for, the heat is on, you, dog. It when you go to the voting booth, you shouldn't even be there. <laughs> 
right now. If you're the type of person that can't make a decision about what you're going to vote for in a, an election or like a, like what laws you want to vote, like j- why are you even there? <laughs> dude, no, yeah, 30 seconds, dude. Yeah. And that sonic music is going, and, it, it, and you don't know what's going to happen if it turns off. You're going to go, ah, ah, and you're just going to die, dude. You shouldn't have stepped into the booth if you weren't about it. Like mm-hmm. you said, if you go to a voting booth and you're sitting there actually having to think about it, then why are you even there? <laughs> no, that's the person that goes to the drive through and wants to order at the window. <laughs> These are the exact same people. Uh, uh, I want. I want. Sir, you, this is the in and out. We sell burgers, fries, and shakes. Mmm, but do I want... Uh, Can I see your secret menu? I want the secret menu. I want animal fries. Sir, this is a Taco Bell. There are no animal fries. Well, and those, those are the people who are literally at the, at the, in the drive-thru for like 20 minutes. And it's, and you just want to just, just Hulk smash their car aside so you can order your number five with a Coke and just keep it pushing, man. That's a big pet peeve of mine. I have no patience when it comes to drive throughs You shouldn't, it's Burger King. You've been here a billion times. You know what you like, man. Why are you arguing <laughs> with 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 the uh, with the order taker, man? Just order it. Just get it done. That's my. That's a. That's a gripe. That's a big gripe. <laughs> do you, Do you relate, winner? Am I just out here? Am I crazy? Yeah, you're crazy. All right, fine. <laughs> I'll be more patient than I guess since I'm 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 dying on this hill. Yes. Speaking of speaking of a uh, death and. And, and hills and burgers i asked the nerdiverse in this next year what fantastical event would you prefer to see out of these options and the options were alien life discovered uh, time travel being possible peace on earth and artificial intelligence um of these four winners which would you would, would you like to see happen if 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 possible this year See, I I don't understand the question. So, (laughs) it's 2020, right? Okay. Something super out of control crazy is going to happen, right? Something Something unforeseen. That's for sure going to happen. For sure going to happen. Okay. Unforeseen um, event. You have four options of what that could possibly be. One is in 2020, aliens are proven to exist. Uh 2020, we figure out that time travel is possible. This year... We find a solution to peace on earth and goodwill toward men, or we finally crack the singularity and create artificial intelligence. What would you like out of those four options? Which one would you prefer to be the, the, the earth changing event to happen this year? Well, out of the four that you you've postulated, uh, you've suggested the one on peace on earth seems to be, have the least amount of like possibility. Apocalyptic, <laughs> no, the least amount of apocalyptic outcomes oh, in the yeah, sense of yeah. like, Oh, we find out there's aliens and they're pissed. Or <laughs> <laughs> We find out there's artificial intelligence and it's pissed. <laughs> yeah. And it's pissed off. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> finding artificial intelligence. We already know what happens. They become racist, and then they, they or, become ultra yeah. racist real fast. Or, and, you know, or, it's over. or as someone put it, they become very truthful, and people don't want to handle it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Truth, truthful robots. I don't, I don't like that, dude. <laughs> Or it's more like they're they're very like there's no like uh, this very matter of fact <laughs> matter of fact going there's this amount of crime in this neighborhood therefore we're gonna wipe out this neighborhood but aren't there a lot of <laughs> mm, <laughs> you see what I'm going yeah. with that okay A plus B equals C yeah there's no <laughs> like humanity to it because yeah. they're robots. robots anyways but peace on earth sounds like the coolest one but I like the idea. Of of uh, there's a book called leviathan wake up uh, something leviathan Mm -hmm. and it's essentially talking about a guy who dreams what he dreams comes true so the psychiatrist tells him like to dream about world peace 
And the way that world peace comes about is that aliens are introduced to the world and they, everyone's just racist to the aliens. <laughs> That's, and I was just talking to someone about that. We were just talking about kind of how the human, the human race just needs to relax. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, no, we just needed, a, we need a unifying factor. You know what I mean? Something to uh, rally he, for or against, right? <laughs> to bring more, us to world peace. Well, well, the the rallying point just needs to be like, uh, back off. <laughs> 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 Everyone just relax. Like you, you do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do, and we won't do each other. Like that's my biggest problem with Star Trek. It's like, okay, Zephyr and Crop. Zephyr and Cochran uh, breaks the warp barrier, right? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully I got that name right. Yeah, um, you got it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Trekkie boys. And the first Vulcans come visit Earth. First signs of alien life, right? Vulcans were like, yo, you doing big shit over there. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? You guys are ready to join the Pantheon. And Earth just gets it together, right? <laughs> like, like, next thing you know, it's like, it's kind of like christ from 15 to 31 <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you know what I mean? like what happened like earthlings just wouldn't be okay with with like vulcans dude like what happened in between zephyr and cock and shaking the hand of a vulcan and the federation you know what i mean like gotta watch star trek enterprise Ooh. When it's it been a us long up. gone getting from there to here mm. That's i've like the- got faith of the heart that's the that's the intro to star trek Enterprise. really i thought that was the theme to like firefly or something uh, <laughs> no. like armageddon I will, key, I will bring faith of the heart, faith of the heart. brought uh, to you uh, this star trek's brought to you by live studio audience. <laughs> this is brought to you by nickelback uh, energize like, now that you talk about it this 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 is kind of a kind of a stacked deck isn't it like alien life could go could swing either direction right right that's too risky right time travel will just makes things way worse I, you know death stranding mode you know what i mean well, like, ti- yeah the the issue is time time travel. travel is rough dude we're gonna jack things yeah. up it ruins the idea it well you have it ruins the concept like you have the entire history department just out the door now so you and it ruins the concept of like writing like people writing down and contemplating history if they can just go back in time and see what happens without and it's and they're off what's going to happen if that does happen is that people are going to miss the idea of thinking about the actions about why they did it and and they're just going since i saw what happened therefore that's the truth and yeah. not thinking about like what led up to it and there's also, the other side to that, where it's the butterfly effect. You just can't have people going back in time and walking around with their cell phones and taking selfies of Abraham Lincoln and stuff. It's going to jack true. stuff up. Yeah. The timeline, you know, is this man made idea, yeah. but at the same time, it's got to be like a living, breathing cosmic entity that we're going to break. Yeah. And not to mention going flinging forward in time, too. And it's essentially suggesting that. There's there's just one strand of time, so yeah. there's like a I don't oh, we don't get and then, and then the multi the multiverse theory all that crazy stuff <laughs> yes so yeah. yeah now that I say it peace on earth is probably my choice too <laughs> <At least> we, <laughs> we can mentally handle that that's yeah. and that doesn't have any repercussions other than aliens other than you start mixing mix and matching mm-hmm. we get peace on earth we throw all our guns away and that's when the aliens show up um it'd be like oh you're defenseless but. Tight and again. I mean true yeah. peace on earth because there's some people are going well we'd have peace on earth if my uncle would just shut up <laughs> well, that's thing. peace on your earth on your exactly. little spot of land exactly like so true, that's why yeah like, homo sapien like yeah not even homo sapien like true earth harmony yeah. <laughs> you know that's never gonna happen and we can, and that's when the argument of liberty comes in folks oh, no. a conundrum okay. <laughs> so what were we talking about we're favorite talking power to- ups Favorite power up, Doug. Um, <laughs> my power up is Liberty. Uh, so, Alien Life and uh, Peace on Earth tied at thirty three percent. Time travel at twenty seven percent, and nobody wants artificial intelligence, Doug. 
because that's bad all around. Like, because <laughs> like you said, this, every time we've come close to breaking the singularity, the yeah. robot just read the internet and became instantly racist. Then it had to kill it <laughs> to kill the brain because <laughs> that thing's a problem automatically. Why would you think it would turn automatically racist? Well, because human beings are right. xenophobic pieces of crap. Yeah. Oh man, love humanity because mm-hmm. I'm part of it. Um, dude, you want to do some New Year's news? Let's get to the news before I crash. <laughs> crash and bird. Uh, okay. Bonus points for for uh. Blues travelers. Oh. I was, I was gonna say uh, hackers, with crash override and acid burn make crash and burn. No, the uh, blues travelers jam song, uh, crash and burn. M- Mr. Jones, help me. No, that's no. Uh, who need number Counting crows. Counting crows. Counting Mr. crows. I think so. Jones, help me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, That's from your generation, right? <laughs> Technically, <laughs> I'm old. I'm sorry, I, I I like the '90s music. Thank you. Okay, boomer. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you uh, you did contribute to it. <laughs> I didn't contribute not one bit. So I experienced your it. your genre is putting on the Ritz. Oh wow, I'm that old. So <laughs> no, I'm the the techno version. <laughs> Oh, taco. Okay. With taco? Okay, I thought you were saying that. I, I had with, to end with that. the with the black face people in it. Oh, that video, dude. Yeah. Rough life. <laughs> I was gonna say, like like I had to enter the Oscars from like the kitchen staff entrance, mm-hmm. is what you're saying. Uh, I didn't go that far. <laughs> but I just <laughs> want but we could contemplate how um, how how far of a society we've we've, we've gotten where uh, that was like people didn't like the music video, so they changed it. But he still had a, he still was successful. Then you go to nowadays, where if he imagined if that type of video came out, or the hint of that type of video, his career would be technically ruined. Yeah, right? he would he would be absorbed by council culture, and his whole yeah. career would be destroyed. Mm-hmm. You know, back then they were just like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's kind of funny what's what's socially acceptable. The worst thing ever is listening to like '90s hip hop mm-hmm. because they because '90s hip hop was very very homophobic. It is very uncomfortable to listen to. <laughs> like mm-hmm. honestly, you'll be in your car, you'll be like, "Oop, that's not good." <laughs> you know, New York era '90s hip hop. You shouldn't throw that word around so often. It's not. Yeah, fun. I don't listen to that. But <laughs> wow, ugh, adios mio, bro. Um, Speaking of things that are horrible, I listen to country, and oh, that's not racist, racist at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's not racist or homophobic yeah. at all, right? Nope. <laughs> for good old for them, good old boys. Oh man, never tell, meaning no harm. Tell that to they never Nas touched X, each though. other's wrists and went to the movies together. <laughs> yeah, right. I want to hear that song by Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. Billy, good old Billy Ray. I will I will die on the hill that the best country singer of all time is Chris Gaines. Um, what? Shut your uh, mouth. Okay. I don't, I don't mean to trigger. <laughs> okay, but, let's get to the news. But this is the this is the hand 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 on the book truth. Uh, I don't know why this is the video game news, but here we go. I don't even care. Video game. There was just just uh, to give you guys a heads up, Nerdiverse. There was no video game news this week. So he puts this garbage in it. This is not garbage. Has in the title movie. This is a true concern, dog. This is a true concern. The U.S. Army is concerned that uh, cyborg sur- cyborg soldiers are going to be a big problem in the future, thanks to movies like Terminator. Dog. Now, the U.S. I'm- Army, dog. Yeah, the real one. Not this now isn't you got to think about what if the how the question was raised. Like, are you concerned about cyber soldiers? <laughs> yes, uh, of course we are. Of course We're we are. Concerned man. about any threat to the American American uh, consciousness. The real man. question is: Are you more concerned about uh, terrorist insurgents or cyber cyborg soldiers? <laughs> They're like, well, of course, and the guy just ends the interview. You heard it here first, folks. Cyborg <laughs> yeah. searches are like, far, yeah, are far more dangerous. Yeah, cyborg soldiers can attack you foreign and domestic. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it's a real problem, no man. The, how far do you think we're away from cybernetic in, in advance? Uh, well, you're going to have to have the the middle part, which is well. There's a difference between cyborg soldiers and cyborg enhanced, right? What what would be a cyborg soldier though? Like a cyborg soldier would be just straight up like you, like you're missing an arm and you have an arm replaced. enhancement. Yeah, right? yeah, a cyborg. But then there's like the middle ground where it's like it's not replacing the arm, but it could be like you're wearing a headset. Type you mean, thing. but that, but I think cyborg is more the inter the integration of parts rather than the assessment of parts. Okay, so the integration of parts you're you're looking at, uh, I'm like, probably fifty years, forty or fifty years. Yeah, like like it's one thing to wear like a bio armor, or not not yeah. or like a exo exo armor, right. where you put on like this heavy mechanical, uh, kind of like exo like like metal yeah, exoskeleton exoskeleton it, it makes you punch faster or run faster yeah. it's another thing that that's far more closer to the future closer to the future yeah. than okay we're gonna take out your heart and replace it well they do that artificial hearts but uh let's say we're gonna cut off your torso and replace it with a metal torso you're just gonna run at 70 miles per hour now right that's that's a cyborg man that's you know what i mean like we're gonna, you know, say we're gonna replace your hands and give you those cool RoboCop hands that can crush every bone in your hand. So that'll be like you just need not... some like Witcher type based children to test on, and then <laughs> we'll get so, according to you, Witcher, a valley of plenty, oh, a valley of plenty, yeah. a valley of plenty. plenty. Yeah. We won't shut up for the Witcher about the Witcher for a little while. I hope no, you guys every are, time you're hope gonna you guys bring are okay. Up the Patreon, every time you make, I'm gonna be singing that song. Yeah, that's a good minute. And we talk about Patreon every episode. Toss pa- the coin to your masters. <laughs> oh, family a plenty. <laughs> that's later, guys. That's later in the episode. Uh, real quick, Marvel news. Just because I'm a nerd and I like talking about Marvel stuff. Um, there is a new crossover <laughs> called Empire. That's with gonna a be y. with a Y, so you know it's hype. Empire, and I don't know much about it. It's really high level Marvel cosmic stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> about like the Kree. Sc- I guess they're redoing the Kree Scroll War, and you guys should know what those things are because the yeah. Kree equal Captain Marvel and the Scroll equal Captain Marvel. So it's, they're doing something with that. Um. Uh, the Hulk's son? No, no, no. That's Scar. Hulk Lean, which is a... a, a it, uh, talking Marvel yeah. is very... Com- I just literally had like a brain fart trying to talk about it. It's just so overly complicated. Yeah. Uh, there should be a new Star Wars comic th- starting this month. Ooh, what's it about? Talk to me. Just... <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> That's all I got. That's all you got? All right, bad, 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 bad. Speaking of comics, are you still watching Batman the Animated Series? No, <laughs> I, I took a break. I need to go back to Star Trek actually before I go into that. All right, fair um, enough. It's not going nowhere. Uh, it's Star Wars number one. I actually I just clicked on Marvel Comics and Star Wars one came out. Yeah, January first, twenty twenty. Uh, in the wake of the events following the Empire Strikes Back, it is a dark time for the heroes of the Rebellion. Vader did not kill Luke's father, Anakin. Vader is Luke's father. Now after narrowly escaping the Dark Lord's clutches and wounded and reeling from the revelation, Luke blah, 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 for the fate. So it, it looks like it's just uh, bridging the gap between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Uh, like most of whatever, everything's going to be. I was just talking to, um, shout outs to How To Phil on Twitter. Me and him, and I put I put up a post talking about like I can't mention the the idea to just reboot Star Wars to people because they just have a mental breakdown. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> just reboot Star Wars. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> people just want to fight me in the streets. We were like, yeah, know. just just uh, just call it a cover. People won't be mad. <laughs> we were having this conversation like You're crazy. Maybe, maybe they should just not do episodes for like another ten years and do more things like The Mandalorian and cartoons and little. They offs. can do all of it. No, because man. even though it might not be a great, they're they're gonna do all of it. They're just, they're, I mean, we have no we have no choice in the matter. They're going to do it all, uh, because they have to. But um, we just have to deal with it. Uh, speaking of Star Wars and There's Baby a Bullseye comic, Bullseye came. rules. The true believers, the criminally insane, Bullseye. 
Bullseye dog. That's a Daredevil villain. Yeah. Hey, hey. It's reprinting Daredevil 1960. Okay, never mind. You want to just talk Marvel dog? No. You want to do that? We can do it. I can talk. Dear comic Lord, books. no. <laughs> All right, don't go down this. Don't go down this. But it, but it looks like I've. This is the first time I'm seeing like this little bracket on the top of Marvel True Believers. I wonder. It, it looks like they're just they It's a re-release thing that they're doing. Oh, okay, fair. They do that a lot. They'll just yeah. um, they'll rewrap the uh, graphic novel and resell it. Usually around like a t- television show or a movie, but. They're just doing it. I'm cool mm-hmm. with that. More people need to read comics. Um, back to my original segue of Star Wars and Baby Yoda. You thought Baby Yoda was hot stuff. Move over, Baby Yoda, because Japan got Baby Sonic. Are you excited <laughs> for Baby Sonic, Doug, the new sensation? Uh, you don't want my answer. Are you what, <laughs> dude, tell me about Baby Sonic and how he's going to sweep the nation. Mm, good luck ba- with that. <laughs> baby Yoda versus Baby Sonic. Who wins? Baby Yoda. How? In what fashion? <laughs> You're really gonna make me participate? In this? Yes. You have, no. This is this is this is the article. This is what we're gonna talk about. Okay. Baby Yoda versus they're they're both in the Sahara Desert. Yeah. Well, and they're, and they're standing off uh, Mandalorian style. Who wins? Well, Maybe. you well you see like Sonic like running towards the baby. This is the Sonic. The baby Sith. Yoda. Yeah. Sonic is the Sith Lord. Yeah, and you just see him running through the desert, and you see the Mandalorian trying to snipe it, but he's, do, he's too fast. Too fast. Yeah. So you hear, okay, he's too fast. And then you see Baby Yoda coming out of coming out of the backpack. Yeah. And then you just hear like the music change. It just gets real somber. You hear, you hear binary sun. Yeah. And you see like sand being lifted up and rocks. And also Sonic is lifted up and Sonic is still like running through it, but he's slowing down. And then the Mandalorian goes, I got the shot. And then just like sprays Sonic's brains across the Jeez sand. Louise, that's a baby, dude. The Mandalorian like, kills a baby. A cold that'll blood? do pig. That'll do. And wow. that's the end of the episode. <laughs> okay. Yeah. S- somewhere in there is the podcast episode name. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> You wanted this. You got it. <laughs> you opened it. We came. <laughs> oh, my, my apologies, Nerdiverse. Uh, <laughs> speaking of things people are going to have to apologize for, uh, Ryan Reynolds has, state, has stated that he's already working on Deadpool 3 with Marvel Studios. Good for him. Good for him. Before X-Men, before in the mention of X-Men, the sniff of mutants, Seems a little cart before the horse, don't you think? Maybe? No. No? It's good. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Fine. All right. We'll let it rock. It's let fine. It rock. Let, let it rock. rock. Speaking oh. of things that are going to rock, uh, apparently FX is developing a Carrie series based off Stephen King's Carrie. How long could they drag that out? I know. Isn't this like the second remake or, or second yeah. or third? Yeah. Carrie's been done to death. It's it, now if it's anything like Bates Hotel. Bates Hotel was actually really good. Um, the uh, the cycle series, right? If they kind of play it like Bates Hotel, um, and they don't make the mother so obnoxious, it can really they can probably squeeze about four or five seasons out of it, maybe <laughs> max. You know, but yeah. it's like what's the what's the series finale? Is it just the night she goes to prom? <laughs> would that be the last episode yeah or is that the first episode you and you pick it up from her like rising from her grave like altered beast no they would have to do like uh, uh <laughs> no a bat so this is this is what the trailer could be okay bet, bet. so it's like uh picture <laughs> i already got it yeah yeah so it cuts to like the high school and then you hear like uh the music of it's like season of the witch by donovan yeah, yeah okay I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. oh no and then you just see her her like blood go down her leg oh Must be the season of the witch that's graphic witch, as witch, shit witch, dude. Witch, witch 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 you know there's a, a prominent scene in carrie where they tease her about having her period right exactly that's where it's happening that's how it starts jeez that's <laughs> not gonna be a, t- a television commercial you you madman 
Well, it's not, they're not going to, like, show it, you weirdo. <laughs> no, but, but the implication of just blood running down her leg and the oh, season of the witch is okay. playing. Pro- how about her faith? Is that all right? Fine. Brain, that's even, brain, that's brain a billion, trauma's all right. <laughs> that's a billion times better, dude. Okay. <laughs> but the main part is, like, she'll be walking, like, in a graveyard and goes, Must be the season of the, the witch. witch. Yeah. They got to add that part or, like, have the band cover it. Dude, have Miley Cyrus cover it. I just want they're all gonna laugh at you, like playing into played into that trailer. They're all gonna laugh. At they're you. all gonna laugh at you. Not if I kill them first. <laughs> they're all gonna laugh at you. And then she like, okay, Carrie versus Baby Yoda, go. Okay, so the Mandalorian and the baby. <laughs> <laughs> he lifts up Carrie in the desert. The Mandalorian takes his no, shot and blows her brains They're up. in a cantina. And, uh, <laughs> like, you just see Carrie walking, like, uh, <laughs> she walks into the bar. And then you see in the corner, the Mandalorian's already there with the baby Yoda. And the Mandalorian, go- Mandalorian goes, <laughs> I see you're already here. I see I see um I see our target. And Carrie goes, I know you've been looking for me. Wee, wee. <laughs> wee, you, wee. Yeah. And you see the Mandalorian try to like he's able to pull his laser gun out, laser his blaster out and shoot, but Carrie's able to freeze the the blast and try to turn it back to the Mandalorian. What? And then Yoda go and then baby Yoda goes, ah and then <laughs> Like does a force projection back to the laser, so yeah. so it tries to go back to Carrie, and then blasts her brains against the wall, Jeez. and then it says Mandalorian chapter nine. <laughs> no, nah, dude, and then it gets real aw- awkwardly quiet, and the yeah. whole bar kind of shuts down, and then you see Danny Lion just come out the side. Mandalorian goes check, please. No, nah, man, you see you see a uh, Jaskier come from, from the corner. Toss a coin to your Mando. No. <laughs> a valley of plenty. Oh, <laughs> oh canteen of plenty. And you just see the Witcher in the back, like the furthest back of the bar, just sitting there drowning in his beer. And then it, go, it cuts to black and goes, executive producer Dick Wolf. There we go. <laughs> Dick <We're> Wolf. Go. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> like, like, like what, if I ever get married, I want the last thing you see on my on like my marriage screen. Mm-hmm. It's just <laughs> executive produ- producer Dick Wolf. <laughs> like, is he here? Like, nah, he couldn't make it. <laughs> uh, invite Dick Wolf to your wedding, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paramount Pictures is bringing back Jackass for a fourth movie. Near, 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 near. Possibly the worst idea in human history. Well, it depends how they do it. Like... Uh, if it's real, I, I, it's the worst idea in human history. No, it's not. Jackass ruined those dudes' lives. Well, all it's of them. A, so you're not Kill, gonna. Jackass killed a guy, dude. <laughs> it's it's not gonna do the what Monty Python did, where they went uh, two down, three to go. <laughs> that was their what? tour at the end. Yeah, yeah, they, it's out of control. Yeah, man. that's what Jackass needs to do. Like even if like one down, <laughs> like. I could already see it. Like, there's a new generation of jackass kids, yeah. and and uh, and uh, John, Johnny Knoxville, and you can't uh, blame it on them anymore. By the way, no, let them be like coaches or something, right? Um, um, Steve O. <laughs> this, this isn't like a, a real boot. They don't. No, it's like a soft reboot, dude. It's a soft, It's the, It's we'll, the handoff. It's the we'll soft have reboot. Have the kids dude. from Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah. Have little what's his face, little Wolfhard. You yeah. know. Uh, T- take wasabi, take wasabi shots up his nose, dude. <laughs> have, you, Bam, have Bam, have like back. That's the thing that you <laughs> you go for. That's the safest thing I could talk about. Okay, too. okay that makes sense. They don't, I don't want them jumping. I don't want them jumping into Hagrid backwoods crap. And you know that like Johnny Knoxville is literally like has a catheter because he like jacked up his stomach once. Well, it happens. A, <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like you don't put new humans through this, man. Them dudes literally sacrificed their body for felt for like wealth and fame. They, they literally did the Faustian deal, <laughs> got the worst out of it. But they're rich though. That's oh, no. Valley. Yo, Plint. That's the theme of this. I'm I'm gonna have to somehow make that the uh, the end song for this episode. Yeah. Uh, lastly, toss a coin to you. Toss a coin to uh, Sid Mead. 
Uh, he passed away at the age of 86. If you're yeah. wondering who Sid Mead was, he was this prolific kind of designer. He was a um, he was a designer of um, art for movies. He helped. He did a lot of design for Blade Runner. Just epic kind of storyboard super lord man and uh apparently yeah like such an impact on the industry that um people are like yeah man you got to give respect to that guy kind of he did a lot of like i'm trying to think of some other films he did actually let me actually look up to see if i can aliens alien yeah he did a lot of the background work for aliens working with um uh, working with uh uh ridley scott ridley scott in James Cameron. Cameron. Who's the de- who was the designer for um the, of the alien actually? Uh Nathan Lane. No, not Nathan <laughs> Lane. Uh he, he designed mm? <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. He designed uh he designed the actual xenomorph. Oh, uh Gene. Uh H.R. Uh, Giger. H.R. Geiger, yeah. Um oh yeah, this guy actually did Gene designs Morgan. for for a Tron, he did designs for um, short. He designed uh, Johnny Five from Short, short Circuit, dude. Do you know who Johnny Five is? The mm. r- actual artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, mm. Johnny Five is a lie. <laughs> Johnny Five rules, dude. Uh, he did designs for Gundam. He actually worked on Mobile Suit Gundam, dude. This this dude went to Japan and and conquered the hearts and minds of the of of glorious Nippon, and they let him design Gundams, dude. You know how okay. awesome that is, Doug? And he created Johnny Five, which is already which is already a lock for me. Because Johnny Five, mm-hmm. if there's one film series that they could reboot, and I'm totally fine with it, bring back Short Circuit, dude. For a new age. You know how you, you know how badly I just want like a pop vinyl of Johnny Five? Cause he's alive, dude. No, man. What? He's been alive this whole time, dude. Dude. Johnny Five. And in Johnny Five is part of a street gang called Los Locos. Remember that? In Los, you remember remember the Los Locos chant, Doug? No, I don't. I'm gonna tell it to you because you have to, you have to listen. It's <laughs> I'll it's, just walk away. <laughs> you better not. Don't leave me alone. It's Los Locos <laughs> kick your ass. Los Locos kick your face. Los Locos kick your balls into outer space. That's great. What are you looking forward to? (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking forward to some sleep, man. I still feel a little out of it from last night. (laughs) Oh, that partying, bro. And uh, I'm stretching right now. (laughs) You're stretching like a cat, dog. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, I... I, I'm looking forward to getting a paycheck this week and trying to get back That's on fun. the budget. Yeah. yeah. I spent like 150 bucks I didn't realize any, I was going to spend because of a uh, car, uh, the tire. Yeah, I feel that. I had to spend what I didn't expect because my phone decided to just explode and I lost all my contacts and photos mm-hmm. and I had to get a new phone, which was money I didn't have. So I'm right there with you. Um, top ramen sandwiches kind of going on here too, but we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more Borderlands Three, which is my only respite that keeps me from going insane. Um, looking forward to seeing what's new on Netflix. January is always mm-hmm. at the start of a new month. Always new uh, series, new t- movies. See if there's anything interesting, maybe we can review and. Uh, Looking to make more content for the new year. Yeah. Yeah, man. Where can we find you? You can find me on all social media under Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk III, uh, at Trash Monk III. And, you know, I, I'm working on a website and working more to come. website. Yeah, man. Visit our website, MasterNerdiversecast.com, where you can find all of our archived episodes. You can have links to all of our. Uh, social media efforts such as Twitter, that's at MNerdiverse, and join our Patreon. That is Patreon forward slash MLTN. Hit it, winner. Nothing? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Do it again. Do it again. (laughs) Do it again. Do it again. Fine. And you can actually join our Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash MLTN. Hit it, winner. 
Toss the coin to your masters, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty. Give us money and we'll make the podcast better. That's how that works, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. If you give us a dollar, I'll shove a dollar into the podcast and our voices will be crisp. Crisp like a fresh dollar bill. Crisp. Uh, crisp my crisper jeans that turn you into a antelope man. Turn you uh, into George Hamilton. <laughs> ooh, turn you into Bob Vila. Uh, if you don't want to support the channel monetarily, uh, likes are greatly appreciated. Follow us on all of our social media and online efforts and subscribe to our channels. Subscribe to our YouTube, uh, Master of the Cast. And you can actually watch our videos and all that fun stuff. You, Winter's making a website, guys. Help him build his dream of having that that ice cream taco nacho website he's trying to make right now. It's called Ice Crocos. Delicious. Okay. okay. $100 million idea. I've, of course, been your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Winter. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. There you go. Don't be